Hello there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Maria and for some reason, even though I barely ever mention it on my channel, like I mentioned it I think twice, but people know me as Maria Shopify Dev Degree YouTuber and then like Twitch whatever, I don't know. A few days ago, I finally graduated from my university and the Shopify Dev Degree program. Yes, I have a shirt. And in this video, I wanted to talk about what the program is, what it was like also for the people applying like how i got in and that story hopefully this video is interesting and it helps you and it's just a good reflection for myself to see like what did i learn what did i do and that type of thing so with that let's get into the video so what even is the shopify dev degree program maybe i'm not the best to explain this but i was in the program so i should be able to say something so basically you're going to be doing a computer science degree in one of three universities york university in toronto canada carlton university in ottawa or dominican university in california so one of those three and then it's partnered with shopify so that you do all of your co-ops or internships at shopify while studying for your degree so how that works is that you're basically doing full-time school and part-time work all four years, or depending on your pace, you might finish earlier or something like that. 25 hours of work every week and around 20 hours of school. So taking about like three or four courses and also your experience at Shopify counts as like a co-op credit. So that counts, which makes you like a full-time student, but some people take courses at different paces. So you might be able to graduate earlier if you stack a bunch of them in one semester and things like that. So basically how the program works is that they don't expect you to know how to code and they teach you everything. So some people come in at different levels. Like I came in with knowing a little bit of coding from high school, even though back then I hated it. But a lot of people come in with zero programming knowledge or some people come in with like one internship in high school. Anyone can apply for this. It doesn't matter how old you are. We've had people in their 50s or people like in their 30s or whatever apply for this program and get in and be successful and learn so much because they changed their careers and they found that they have a passion for this. So if you're concerned about that, just know that you're not alone and there's so many mature students who are joining this program and are really amazing. Anyone can apply, but like the requirements are you're either coming out of high school and you apply to one of those universities and you got accepted into them. You are a mature student, so you didn't have a degree in computer science before, because if you did, then just apply for the regular internship or like regular jobs at Shopify, or you're in your like your first year at those schools, so then you can switch in, which is similar to what I did. So I'll talk about that later. So in the first eight months, you go through what's called the training path, which is where they help bring everybody up to speed on how to code, what software development looks like, and how to do that at a tech company like Shopify. After the training path is when you get placed onto your first team. And that first team, you stay on there for 12 months, but you are working part-time. So about like two and a half or three days a week, essentially is what you would be working. After that, every other team you're on, so the next three teams is for eight months. So you have four different placements, which is what they call them, or like four different internships in the end. Also, I should mention that Shopify pays you for the work you're doing and also when you're on the training path, when they're just like teaching you. So it's like double the school essentially. And they also pay for your tuition, which is really great because then you can take a lot of courses like I took without worrying about how expensive they are because courses are expensive. So then I was able to take stuff like Korean and acting because Shopify was paying for them. And back when I joined in 2018, things were all in person. So I would be traveling from my house to school to work in downtown Toronto. And now things are different and it became fully remote. So now it's a digital by design company. So that's something that you should know as well. I'm afraid that this video is going to be long <laughs> because there's too much to say. But basically, how did I get into this program? I mentioned earlier on that I was already pursuing my degree when I joined the program. I joined the program a few months late. And how did this happen? Well, I applied for just one school, which is York University. And yes, I'm jealous of people who had the money to apply to other schools and talk about it all the time because I did not have that money or that opportunity. So obviously I'm grateful that I was even able to go to university. So I chose the one that's closest to my house and the cheapest, which was York University in Toronto, Canada. I started there and I decided to go into engineering because the first year is a general type of engineering. So you try out everything and I was kind of leaning more towards software. But then at the beginning of the school year, like in September, I got an email saying that Shopify was holding a party at the engineering building. I was like, hmm, maybe I'll finally get to understand what Shopify is. Because a few months leading up to me getting that email, 
I was curious about what Shopify was because I kept seeing stickers of Shopify on people's laptops. And then I would ask them, what's Shopify? And they would be like, mm, I don't know. I just got this sticker at a hackathon. My plan was to go to this event or a party. And after I finished my linear algebra assignment, because that was top priority. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'll go downstairs because we were studying upstairs. I was like, oh, I'll go downstairs to the first floor of the Bergeron Center and go talk to them and see what it's about. So I go there and then there's like this whole huge like literal party and it's talking about the launch of the dev degree program and I'm like I don't know what that is and then I stumbled into a few girls who are already in the program they talked to me and I was like oh what is this and they're like oh it's this program and we're looking for two more students because they only had eight for the first York cohort and I was like oh this is so cool like I started asking them questions about it like what is this program like and I was like oh but I'm in engineering and then one of them, I distinctly remember her saying, she was like, oh, don't worry about it. You can change your major. And I was like, okay. And then all I had to do was write my email on a little piece of paper and then hand it to Allison, who's the leader of the program. And I gave that to her. And I was really worried that like they wouldn't email me because I didn't hear back from them for like a week or something. And I was like, oh my God, did it, they like, mistyped my email like did they get it wrong because that was such a weird way to give someone your email like write it on a paper i got like, an email telling me to apply and i applied and i did like everything that people normally do online like do all those thinking questions and like write paragraphs about myself and yeah i talked about my experiences in high school and things like that i would recommend people applying um, my tips would be to not like brag about yourself don't be a snobby what i've heard from people reviewing those applications is that it's much better when you answer one question with like one of the dis like response questions with one story and go more into detail instead of like 15 random examples and not go into depth that's my advice no idea what other advice to give and then i got into the interview phase and i had two interviews which i had to skip my engineering class for and i was the one person in that class who talked so it was very noticeable <laughs> but i told my professor and he was fine with it and he was happy when i eventually got into the program so i skipped my engineering class to go downtown to toronto my first time going there alone i got lost obviously because i am me i found the place where i was supposed to go i found the building but i couldn't be called into it so i had to go to the other floor and ask them to call Shopify and let me in because it was at a WeWork that they had in downtown Toronto because there wasn't enough space. So that's where I talked to a recruiter and we talked about life and I talked about art because I always loved the drawing and we just connected on that and it was just a conversation, it was really nice. And after that, I had my technical interview, which is more of like just showing how you think and it's not, not any coding, so that was really nice. And I also got lost for that because they told me to go to one building that Shopify had, but then they changed it on their end to be the other building and they didn't tell me so then i went to the wrong place and i was like <laughs> so allison had to go and walk me over to the other building and basically the type of question they asked me was like how would you design this type of thing and then i just talked about it they even gave me paper so i could write stuff down but then i didn't really feel like it so i was just talking about things and they would ask me questions like oh what could go wrong in this situation and stuff like that so it was really fun and i felt really happy after that interview but super nervous and I did get a call back obviously got the job offer so that was great probably not as competitive as the years now because now more people know about this opportunity but yeah I'm very grateful that I was able to get in and yeah it was a good interview experience much better than some of my other company interviews which you can check out on my youtube channel so now let's talk about the training path in theory this should be eight months of your life but for me it was kind of weird because like I said earlier, I joined late. I joined with my friend Jerry at the end of November. We basically joined into a group of people who had already formed cliques and it was kind of hard. So we were kind of the in-between people. It was basically the boys together and then the girls together. And then me and Jerry in between. And we always had to work on stuff together. So Jerry and I are really good friends. And we obviously eventually became close to everybody, but it was kind of hard like joining partway through and trying to meet people and become close friends when they already built relationships. And Basically, they told us, okay, in the month of December, you're gonna try to catch up on the last three months of the stuff that they did so that in January, you can start at the same point as everybody else. So then me and Jerry were like, okay, let's do it. And basically what we learned in the first semester is Ruby. So we got this Ruby textbook and we were going through that and we would submit exercises like part of the book or stuff that they had online. Like there was some like learning modules that you had to do and those would get marked. And it was all using Git. So I was learning Git and making pull requests and stuff like that. So that's like pretty good. It got me used to doing that. After the Ruby course, 
then it goes into JavaScript and HTML and CSS. So we tried to finish that. I think those are the main three things. And also for the JavaScript course, we had to make a game, but my game didn't work because I was trying too hard. And both Jerry and I tried making way too complicated games that we couldn't finish in time, but we still got good marks because the guy marking us saw that we were trying. So that was good. Then in the second semester, the goal was that you go through the database, Ruby on Rails and React and GraphQL courses. While you're doing that for those four months, you're building a project and you're like adding to it layer by layer. So first you learn what a database is. That's usually something people learn in third year in university. In college, you learn it as well in first year. That's what I found out. And there's also like some really good Stanford MOOC course that we use. So that's for free online. So basically dev degree for the training path, they pull in a lot of resources and they also have lecture style teachings from the people on the training path, like the teachers on the training path. And then after you build your database for your project, so mine was a language learning app because I was garbage at Russian and I wanted to get better, but I still am garbage. But this time I'm learning Korean, so I forgot about Russian. My database was garbage. I had to redo it so many times because I was like, this doesn't make any sense. And then we learned backend, so Ruby on Rails. So then you add on top of your project and you build the backend for it. And then you do the React and GraphQL course, which was like about a week when I did it, which is very rushed. Yeah, I just remember in the training path, we used to steal a lot of snacks from the office. Basically there are three offices in Toronto, but like during the training path, we only had two. The third one was like being built. They didn't have enough room for us. So they put us at a random building nearby. So a few steps away. So we would always run to the 80 Spadina office and steal snacks. And yeah, it was great. We also had catering until they built a new office. Then they had actual chefs in the office. And they also had like games that you could play. They had ping pong tables, like the tech lifestyle. That's when I learned that tech offices are cool. And I would always bring my friends. <clears throat> now they're using their new office for bursts, which is what Shopify is doing because it's remote. So people are able to meet. So like they sent me and all the production engineer people to San Diego last week. So that was really nice. Five star resort. So yeah, maybe if you join, you get to do those because those are cool being sent on fancy trips. Also during this time, you're paired with someone at Shopify who works as an engineer most likely and they're your life at Shopify mentor. So mine was this woman who was in data engineering and I got along with her and her team. So I would have lunch with them all the time and they were super great. They're just really good role models and then they help you kind of like understand the culture at Shopify and get used to it. And there's someone you can ask questions to. So I think that's really useful. So now let's talk about the most interesting and juiciest part of this video and of dev degree, the placements. So I'm not gonna lie to you, when I first was told that I would be joining a front end team for my first placement, I cried. In that meeting, after the meeting, when I went home, I was just like, <laughs> and people were trying to console me. And it was weird for them probably because I think maybe they saw me as more emotionless at the beginning because I was just like doing my stuff and not really being super like, I don't know, yeah, like crying at the office. But then this was like probably the first time I cried. And then after that, I cried more. So don't worry about it. Life is hard, obviously. And especially when you're doing school and work at the same time. But we had great people in the training path, like JB, who was on the training path, who bought us these huge chocolate chip cookies because we were all sad about this one calculus test that we all failed. So that was super nice and super sweet of him. So I could talk to him about it and I did not feel prepared for my front end placement because we did mostly back end stuff like during training path, at least in my training path. So when I saw that it was front end and I saw who my mentor was, he had like a Slavic last name. So I was like, oh my God, he's gonna make me speak Russian to him because I was already speaking Russian to some of my math profs at school and I was <laughs> terrified of having to do it at work. So I was like, oh my God, oh no. And he's gonna like not like me or something. He's gonna think I'm stupid because I don't know front end. But he was actually definitely hands down, like not to be mean to any other mentors I had, but he was the best. Like he, he was so good. Like you, you don't understand. Like someone who has mentored so many people in the past, like they know what they're doing. I came in and I'm like an organized person and he is more organized than me. So he knew what to do. He made a Google doc for me and put a list of things for me to learn. Like for, he put a bullet point for Git and put like Git cherry pick, this thing, this thing, or HTML, this type of stuff, React, these types of things. Obviously for my co-op courses at school, we're forced to make goals, but he made me make more goals. And that was really good because then I could learn more technical stuff. Under each thing he wanted me to learn, I had to link which pull request I learn that in so I can prove that I learned that thing. So I think that was super useful. But during this time, I felt like I was so dumb. Like my brain was a brick wall. It was just, everything is bouncing off me and I don't understand React. It was only until the end of those eight months when I actually understood why, which was because 
I was reading a lot of articles with a bunch of text. And when I went to this conference about women in React, literally at the end of my placement, like the end, because I had to join late, usually it's 12 months, but because I joined late to the program, they made me join. So I only had eight months, which was fine with me. Uh, so I had more time on the training path at the end. And this one woman who's an illustrator, she gave this amazing presentation explaining React as a potato plant, and I will link it below. And everything just made sense. Like if you explain yarn to me or something as an ice cream cone, it will make sense. <laughs> so that's that's how I learned things. And it, like finally things started to click with me, but I could still do stuff. It's just like it didn't click fully in my head for some reason. I could still do stuff and hard like web dev things, but it just like, it didn't feel like it made sense until that point. The main thing that I learned that everybody learns in their first internship is get rebasing because you will fuck up so many times. That's all of us. All of us, no matter if you did an internship in high school, all of us fucked up that first placement because we would always have to like go to our mentor and be like, um, what happened? My commit is all messed up. Why is my commit history like this? And then, or like my teammates around me, I would always mess up and that's, something you were going to have to go through and it'll be funny like you know you go through that you panic and you learn how to fix it i really like that placement actually because i was kind of on two different teams felt like it was a startup within shopify because it started with like 20 people on the team and it was growing maybe to like 40 people and now it's like a whole huge product line at shopify and it was about how do you teach people how to become an entrepreneur because when you join shopify you have a checklist of things you should do like add your first product do this other thing. What if people don't know how to do any of this stuff? What if they've never done this before? How do you market your product? It's like when I joined YouTube, I didn't know any of these things either. It would be great if there's a checklist to help you, but there's also great if you have a platform where you can learn about that stuff. So that's what we were building, which was called Shopify Compass originally, but now it's under shopify.com slash learn. So you can check that out. And it's like a learning platform, kind of like Coursera and things like that, where you can take courses, some of them are free, some of them are paid, and we were building that out. And when I joined, we were just not even released the alpha version yet. So I was helping on the alpha version, which is insane. So that was super cool. And I was just doing more like basic React component type of things, which is like the designers give you the designs and we were using Figma and then I have to make that into code essentially. But what was more interesting for me was the other team that I was working on within the same area because my mentor was kind of on two teams. So the other team was called contextual learning. So now that we know this information about the person, like, oh, they're this type of merchant. So like they're trying to sell this type of thing and they haven't added any products on their products page yet. Let's give them a video or an article to teach them how to do that. Giving them learning in the context of who they are and where they're at in their path to becoming a successful Shopify merchant, essentially. So that was really cool. And I got to build this component, like a toolbox essentially for how to surface videos. So like a video card component. And a lot of companies, they have like their own design system. So ours is called Polaris. I was the first person to contribute to Polaris outside of the Polaris team. And it was an interesting experience, I'll tell you that. I was working on my component, trying to make it, trying to hear different people's opinions, write the tech design stuff and figure that type of thing out and work with stakeholders, work with product managers, data scientists, everybody. But the main issue was working with the other team, like that design team, because every time I talked to them, I would ask them questions, they would pass me on to a different person. So it felt like I was a hot potato. I told my product manager after a few months and he was like, what is this? Like they're supposed to be talking to you and communicating. And once we actually did sit down and they told us what was going on, that they were having a reorg with their group, like everybody was being put onto different teams. It made sense and I felt more empathy towards them because they didn't know who is supposed to talk to me essentially about this stuff. They don't know who owns what. It's good to learn that, I guess in my first internship, that things won't always go smoothly. You have to be empathetic towards other people in their situation because it's not just all about you. You can't just expect people to review your code in five seconds. Like they have their own things that they're working on. What was really nice was that my mentor, he made the goal for me. At the end of those eight months, he wanted to be able to say that he would hire me as a full-time engineer if I decided to like quit the dev degree program and start full-time. And it was really nice when he said at the end of those eight months that he would do that. Also, I have blogs and day in the life vlogs for all of these placements. If you wanna check those out, I'll link them in the description. Okay, now let's talk about my second placement. So that was kind of messed up because um, I was excited. It was backend. I was excited to 
work in backend. I know more backend, right? My mentor left within one month. She wanted to move to a different team. And then because things became remote, she could. So she did that. And there was no one else to mentor me on the team or like be my actual mentor. I was on the app authorization team. We were trying to change the way that we authorize apps within Shopify because before we were using third-party cookies and then we changed using JWTs. And that was a whole huge project that kind of messed up my internship, <laughs> but uh, it was interesting though. Essentially, there are third-party developers and other companies who want to make apps for our app store. And basically we need to authorize those apps to have certain permissions and things like that. And what the problem was that my mentor, she left within a month, right? So I didn't really have someone to give me issues and tasks to work on. They kept saying like, oh, we're going to finish this project in a month. And then it would be a month and it's still not finished. And we keep going and going. And for over eight months, it's like still, it was still not finished. It was really hard for me because I kept trying to say like, I want to do work. I want to do this stuff. But there's not a lot for me to do because there's a lot of people on the team who are smart and they're doing stuff. And then what am I supposed to do? So I was pair programming with these two other people who are really great. And I had so much fun pair programming with them. We would pair program for hours. And I learned so much from them because they're like a few years older than me. So then they couldn't be my mentors because they weren't like senior engineers. It was hard at first because I'm an introvert. So pair programming was very energy draining, but I learned so much from them. So I'm very grateful that I got to do that. Yeah, it was a more, I would say a full stack than back end. So it was kind of some front end because we had to like change a bunch of things, but I am grateful that I had the experience, even though it was very disorganized and it was kind of a confusing project, like for me to wrap my head around because there were so many moving pieces and it's like, oh, this thing talks to that, then boom, 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 back and forth lots of communication between different services and the tech stack was mostly Ruby on Rails, React, GraphQL, Next.js and Python randomly because then at the end I was making documentation and examples for people who need to be able to switch like the third-party app developers to switch to using our new method of doing things so I was learning those as well but yeah it was a kind of messed up place but I'll say that so not everything is going to be great sometimes you'll have that and it's it's not good and I told dev degree about this like you need to kind of vet what teams you're putting people on before you go there. I still, I don't regret being on that team. But then going into my third placement, which is data engineering, I kind of had to relearn how to code in a normal team environment where I'm actually being given tasks to work on and I have to write tests and everything. Because a lot of the time in my second placement, I would do something and then it would have to be scrapped a lot of the time. Like I would be doing something on top of the stuff that we were working on. And then that stuff we we found out it does not work. So we had to scrap what I was doing. And it happened a few times. I was very depressed essentially like on that team because a lot of the stuff I was trying to do would be knocked down and I wouldn't be able to publish a lot of things or deploy things. And then in data engineering, I got to do that. But in data engineering, it was really interesting because I got to set goals with my mentor and he gave me a lot of good tasks, like contributing to open source, writing like really good tests and just getting really good at Python and being able to work on a project that my team was working on and work on one part of it with him, like pulling in old data and trying to fix that up. But it was hard because I didn't know the why behind a lot of things because I had never taken any theoretical courses on big data and why it's necessary or how it works. So it was basically me trying to puzzle things together based on like different documentation that we had. Even though now like that I have taken those data courses, I understand it more. So maybe it's good to actually like read things online about how big data works instead of just like jumping into Apache whatever and being like, yeah, let's do this, even though I don't understand why I'm doing it. And this is also the time during the summer where I did my double internship with Twitch and Shopify as a data engineer. So it was kind of interesting. And the tech stack for this was Python, a little bit of Java for the open source. And I used Google Airflow, so that was pretty cool. All right. And now my final internship, the one that I just finished like two days ago, production engineering. That's the title that I always wanted to have. Ever since I started in dev degree, I was telling one of the people in the dev degree team that I wanted to do data engineering and production engineering as like my last two placements. Why? Because I didn't think that would be good enough to be in production engineering until the end of my degree, which I don't think is true. I don't think it's as intimidating as people make out to be. It's more of like infrastructure stuff. It is interesting. But that's also the thing, like the first two placements I had were more product focused. People actually see what you're doing. Whereas data engineering and production engineering are more platform areas. So it's behind the scenes stuff. So you don't get to do all those flashy things like sharing what you're doing. Because in theory, in the platform, if you're doing something and things are alive, the website's up, all that stuff, and no one's yelling at you, then 
that's great. Like <laughs> things are going well. So before joining the team, I was told that I wouldn't be doing much coding and that the team doesn't talk a lot, but that was a lie because I did so much coding on this team, so much Golang, which is great. I love Golang. But then also my teammates talk so much and it was really great because I kind of felt in my data engineering team because there weren't any women on my team, which is also something that I should mention. Like all of my teams had like no women or women like on another team close to mine, but not on my team. So I was always the only woman and the youngest, which is not fun which I will say, I'm not like a quiet person on camera, I guess, but in person, I'm more introverted. It's hard for me to speak up and it was not really fun when I would be in meetings and people would skip me when I'm supposed to be saying something, like they would just skip me and end the meeting. And I'm like, wait, excuse me, um, I'm here, I should say something. But other women don't experience this because they're on teams with other women. When I joined my production engineering team, I told my lead that, and she was my first female lead. And I told her like, I didn't feel like super connected to my teammates because we would just talk about work. We never did anything and we're all online. So it wasn't a great like team environment, you know? I told her that and she's like, okay. And she made a meeting on Fridays where we could all just hang out and talk and play games. And that was so much fun. And I got to know my teammates so well on my production engineering team. And also she moved the two team meetings to the days that I worked at Shopify. Like that was so nice of her. And that just shows like she really cared about me and my experience on the team. To do that for an intern is amazing. And yeah, I'm very grateful that she did that because then I felt so much better and I felt like everyone was really friendly on this team. So that was really good. I also felt really autonomous when I was on this team because yeah, I've had a lot of experience. I knew some Golang. I was learning Kubernetes for the first time and so many other things in Terraform and so many other technologies and just a way of thinking about building infrastructure. It was really cool and I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people don't like working on the platform side of things and say it's super boring, but I think it's really interesting and I might want to continue in this type of area in the future. I even got to lead my own project and I worked with like my other teammate on it and it was so much fun and I learned so much. I also touched so many different areas of Prod Eng at Shopify. I felt really good on this team and if I were to stay at Shopify, then I would have stayed on this team, I think, because it was so much fun. Which brings me to my last point in this video, which is why did I not stay at Shopify after I graduated? If you followed me from like the new grad diaries and all that, then you'd understand. Basically, because I had that in-person experience in my first two years at Shopify, I realized that that's what I like and I want to be in person for my first full-time job. I really miss meeting people and like working beside somebody. And I didn't want my life to stay the same after I graduated, like continue living at home, have the same stuff, just sit at my desk. Nothing would have changed, nothing would be different. So that's kind of why I decided to do that because I wanted something new and a change. And my camera's running out of battery, so I better say things quickly. I just wanna say that I am so grateful that I was given this opportunity. I definitely did work hard. Every single day in like the trading path, me and a few other people, we would always think that we were going to be kicked out of the program. We were like, oh my God, we're gonna fail. But everybody reassured us. And they said like, we see potential in you. We see where you can go. And I want to just thank everybody who saw that in me and other people in the dev degree program and gave us this opportunity to be able to try out different things and work on different teams where we had no experience. We got to meet so many smart people and every single person I talked to, even if it was for five minutes, I learned something from them. And even if I wasn't in the dev degree program, I still think that I would have been somewhere in software engineering. But I think that this definitely gave me like a leg up in my confidence and just being able to try out so many different areas and figuring out more of what I like. I'm forever grateful for everyone in the dev degree program and at Shopify. <laughs> so thank you so much. And I hope you learned something from this video. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will see you next time. Bye.